Hi everyone, it's me Catherine and today I'm here to bring you my spoiler free review for The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger books 1 and 2 in a duology by Renee RDA which was inspired by A Thousand and One Nights. And in this duology we follow Khalid, a young caliph who takes a bride and then kills her the morning after their wedding and then takes another bride and then kills her the next morning and so continues for however long it's been going on until our protagonist Shahzad who volunteers to be his next bride in order to exact her revenge on him for the death of her best friend who was one of his brides only when she arrives at the palace she starts to realize that maybe there's more going on behind the scenes than she originally thought maybe there's more to Khalid than she originally thought and stuff happens and overall I did really enjoy this duology. I did reread it before I did this review because it's been a while since I read it. I think I read it back at the beginning of the year. So I reread it to freshen my thoughts and things. And honestly, The Wrath and the Dawn held pretty much the same as it did when I first read it. The Rose and the Dagger, unfortunately, did not live up to the original read. It did, it did let me down a lot more this time around and whether it's because I've had time to think about things now and I'm seeing it with I'm seeing it differently this time or reading it more closely this time and it's the first time I read The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and Dagger pretty much one after the other and I was so caught up in The Wrath and the Dawn and the romance that I think I missed a lot of The Rose and the Dagger the first time round which is a real shame because I thought I loved it I mean I still liked it but it wasn't anywhere near I didn't enjoy it anywhere near as much as I did the first time round which is really sad and I almost regret doing it but now I know I guess now I know but anyway yeah so overall I really enjoyed it I the thing I enjoyed the most I think was the romance um, aspect of this between Khalid and Shahzad and that is what I both loved about it and also what led it down a little bit for me towards the end. I mean it wasn't perfect in The Wrath and the Dawn by any means and it did it does start off a bit insta lovey, which meant I didn't feel as much for this romance as maybe I could have done if it had been built up a bit more slowly rather than you just throw it getting thrown straight into it. Um, so that let it down a little bit but once you get past that, if you can get past that, then the romance in The Wrath and the Dawn was amazing and I loved it and it's so intense and I loved it. And I looked back, um, before I did this video obviously, I looked back to what my original review was on The Wrath and the Dawn that I wrote in my book journal and I'm just going to read you that because that pretty much sums up my feelings for The Wrath and the Dawn the first time I read it. This romance is everything I want in a romance. So intense, so all or nothing, love it. This is what I love my romances to be, so good. To be honest, the romance is all I remember. Were there other characters? Who knows? Obviously there were other characters and obviously I do remember them, especially now after the reread. But honestly the romance is the main thing that I loved about it. The other side of it was interesting and it's nice, you know, finding out more and watching Khalid sort of open up more about what's been happening and the things that he's done, which I really liked, but the romance. And I think it let it down for me in The Rose and the Dagger because the romance was then already established. The relationship was already established. I mean, I don't think that's a spoiler. I think you pretty much know that it is. Um, it's already, already established and I sort of prefer the build up to relationships because once, unless there's something to properly test the relationship and to test their feelings for each other, um, an already established relationship holds no hold over me and the rest of the plot, the rest of the story did not hold up enough to make The Rose and the Dagger as good as The Wrath and the Dawn because the romance, the other side wasn't as, um, didn't pull me in as much The rom and the romance was, it was already established, there was nothing to test them. We get that they're in love and that they're just the same things repeated over and over again and it just got very samey, very repetitive and that's one of the things I think that let it down, that let the rose and the dagger down for me. So the plot itself, aside from the romance, there is obviously another side to it. There is the reason that Khalid is killing these brides, um, he's taking these brides and killing them every day and obviously Shazi is getting to the bottom of it and then we find that out. So that's, I like I like that side of it. But I think that maybe, I don't know, there wasn't enough time taken with it, enough time to properly build it up and it fell a little flat in the end in The Rose and the Dagger, um, which without the romance like completely holding me in, it did sort of 
the whole book sort of fell a bit flat for me. So the characters. The, char the characters are fine, the characters are great. Khalid is probably my favourite. I love characters like Khalid, the ones that are seem to be so... that seem to be... Um, the ones that are bad, like people see them as bad people but there's actually something more to them, there's another side to them, there's maybe more than what you're just seeing on the surface and I really enjoy that and really just dest destroy, destroy, I really enjoy discovering um, more about them and seeing them open up more and revealing more and sort of developing as a character and getting better as a character and I love Khalid, I love Khalid, Shadi was great her temper and the way her temper manifests did start to irritate me a little bit towards the end but overall Shazi and Khalid great Tariq is sort of the third wheel in this romance there is sort of like a little triangle sort of thing going on um, but Tariq is, is, is the only one that really feels like it's a triangle Poor bloke. He's very irritating though. Very, very irritating and continues to be irritating. There is a moment in The Rose and the Dagger when you think, you know what, finally he seems to be getting it and then he does things and I just... <sighs> no. So overall, I did rather enjoy this duology. I enjoyed it much more the first time around than I did for the reread, which really, really makes me sad because that hardly ever happens. Usually when I reread a book, it, I enjoy it the same, more or less the same, I can't, I, I'm so sad, I'm so sad, it makes me so sad just thinking about how much, how less I enjoy it. <sighs> the only thing that hasn't changed about The Rose and the Dagger is the ending. I didn't like that the first time round and the second time round it wasn't going to change, simply because, not because it's a bad ending necessarily, but because it's the type of ending I don't particularly like to see. It's so, It's one of those where it shows you our characters years later in a certain moment showing you what they're up to then. I don't like to see an end end. If that makes any sense. Like, I don't want to see them years later with their happy families and whatever because I can picture that in my head. I can imagine that and I can um, assume that that's what's going to happen. What I like to see is them rebuilding and getting back on their feet, especially after what's happened over the two books, and seeing them um, coming together to make things better. And that's what I would rather have seen. Then so many years later, everything's sorted. Here's them now in this one moment being untroubled by everything sort of thing. So that let it down for me but I'm very picky about my endings anyway like maybe in another story that would have been fine but in this one that was not what I was after so yeah so overall like I said I do enjoy this duology um but at the beginning there is a bit of insta love and there is a sort of love triangle -y thing but it's not really a love triangle at all it's just Harry being really annoying so if those things are really not for you then maybe this won't be but if you think maybe you can look past that then I would definitely suggest checking it out. Maybe you'll enjoy The Rose and the Dagger more than I did. Maybe you will, but I just... <sighs> so disappointing. So disappointing. So anyway guys, that is it from me and this spoiler free review. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are if you've read this, whether you've reread it and your opinion has changed on it, because honestly I'm still so... I'm not over it. I'm not over it at all. I just can't believe it's not the same. It just never happens to me. This never happens to me and I'm just so sad that it happened this time. But anyway, that's it from me guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you in another video. Bye!